Um, I had a question pop up uh, today in the uh, the Slack group, uh, and it was how do we how do we model a uh, a dome shape like we see in this image right here? And we can see that there's like a shell on the outside and the the top side right here, and there's sort of a hollow section running through it. Um, there's also these sort of barrel vaults here that, that are coming through that can be done with a, a solid element operation pretty easily. Um, but the best way to handle this is with the shell. And I've just kind of quickly drafted out not knowing what the dimensions were on the original SketchUp file that that was done in, but just sort of giving a, a general radius of, of uh, 20 feet and an aperture of about eight feet here, so four feet from the center to there. Uh, I'm just gonna take the shell tool, and if you look over here in the info box, you can see I have the revolve shell, and I have uh, options for it to be a basic vault, which is uh, fine if we just want it to be a, a sort of hemispheric dome, um, but we can also apply this to a custom profile. Uh, once we have custom profile set, we could set it to have a thickness, we could set it to have a building material. If we did want it to be a paper thin uh, shell like we see on this one, you can set that thickness to zero. Uh, if it's built up with layers of plaster and everything, you can also use a composite. Um, once you have that set, uh, you can either draft it out or here because I already drafted it out with uh, polylines, uh, you just hold down space and you click on that area, that region. Uh, you give it a center point. We're going to rotate around that center point right there. Uh, and we're going to revolve 360 degrees. Uh, notice that it's uh, revolved uh, from there outward. So let's uh, let's make this thickness something more reasonable. We'll set that to one, and we'll flip it inward. Uh, so now it's inbound uh, from that. Uh, it does appear as though it's deviated a little bit from that, but you could see that, uh, or maybe it's just where it's being cut. But you can still adjust these polylines. So if, if this uh, aperture in the middle needed to be smaller, or if it tapered at the top or something, you can always adjust that. Uh, you know, maybe it's something like there's there's a cer certain thickness uh, we can add a node there, uh, and maybe it needs to like cap after that. So we could basically have that as like a recess. Um, not sure again exactly what the dimensions and the the design of that were. Um, now what we're going to see here. Uh, so there's that. Uh, and then I'm going to drop in a morph cube right next to it. Um, and I do this pretty frequently working with shells because the shell tool is freely rotatable. Uh, so now we can take this guy and rotate it uh, off of this axis to become vertical like that. So there's my, there's my, uh, my dome. Uh, now for the portion uh, that defines, uh, and, and again, like this is still editable, right? So if this had to uh, lay out into a top plate situation or something like that, where there's a flat edge or whatever, like there's, there's uh, if you can get access to and manipulate this blue line right here, that's going to give you the ability to redefine um, that, uh, that shell's boundary. Uh, the origin point right here, the axis, uh, you don't really want to mess with that. That starts to really throw it off. But uh, the polyline that defines that revolution is still accessible and editable, uh, regardless of the position and rotation. So now for the boundary vaults, that can also be done with a shell. Uh, but we want to use the extruded shell. Uh, and here we're going to do, uh, I mean, we could technically say that uh, this is going to be uh, a vault. Maybe we draw this in and we say that the vault here uh, is something like this, right? So we can we can technically do this as an extruded shell as well, uh, using some reference point right here. So I'm going to say that this is an extruded shell, and I'm going to say that we've got this point, this point, and this point, and then we're just going to do an extrusion of whatever it needs to be, like four feet, five feet, whatever. Uh, and again, because this is based on that polyline we can adjust and manipulate that polyline to whatever we need it to be there. Uh, now if we pull this stuff together in 3D, you can see this piece right here. This extrusion length, uh, we should be able to still manipulate that as well. Although that's just that length. Um, should be an extrusion length here somewhere. That's the thickness, the height to home story. Um, this might actually work anyway. Uh, so now if I rotate this vertically and get this in the right spot, it might need to connect in section or something to figure out exactly where that needs to be, or maybe it's just undersized. 
Uh, but then you can use this as the operator uh, with downward extrusions. So if we go here, count zero, that's the operator. This is the target. Subtraction with downward extrusion, those are related. And again, if I pulled this out and made it a little bit deeper, that might have helped. Uh, but uh, the other way to do that is to select these two things. And if they're sized right, and you kind of take the right time to get in the right spot, you can say connect and trim those to each other. Uh, and it'll do, uh, it'll actually find the junction between them. Uh, in most cases, again, this is not in the right spot uh, for that, but if you do get it in the right spot before you trim it, uh, they can trim together very effectively. So for something like this, if you know what that shape needs to be, and, and having it from SketchUp like this is fine, you can actually take a section through there and figure out sort of what that shape needs to be to create that vault's inner, uh, inner uh, curve and the outer curve and the void in the middle. Uh, take a section, draw it out with polylines, and, and then just trace it in uh, floor plan with the revolved shell.